I will, Honorable Vice President, I recognize the President of uh, Honorable Ziambi Ziambi, the Minister of uh, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. Honorable Deputy Minister Musabayana, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Trade. Honorable Lab Moma Tuke, Deputy Minister of Public Service, Labor and Social Welfare. Also, Honorable Jennifer Mkhanga, Deputy Minister of Women Affairs and SMEs. Permanent Secretaries who are also here present, Permanent Secretary Dr. Chitepo, also Permanent Secretary Dr. Magumbo. Thank you for coming. And uh, also acknowledge uh, Mr. K.K. Katsande, Co-Chair of NECF. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and also a challenge to be able to introduce the guest of honor. Before I introduce him, I would like to let you know that this morning he challenged the chairman of ZITF and myself to look at the buildings that host ZITF. They are in sound condition, but he told us that these were built by an investor 63 years ago. So he said to us, so why aren't you looking? Why aren't you being innovative and looking outside the box and find support partnership to build or rebuild new places for ZITF, given how much we are growing? So I want to thank you very much, Honorable Vice President, for that advice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very delighted to have this honor to introduce to you our guest of honor this morning, who is Dr. C.G.D. N. Chiwenga. He is the Vice President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, and also the Minister of Health and Child Care. The Vice President of the Republic of Zimbabwe was appointed Vice President on the 22nd of December, 2017. He was born in Weather. He's a distinguished cadre of the liberation struggle, which brought our political and economic independence. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Vice President is a distinguished strategist, he's a commander, he's a scholar. In terms of his academic achievements, the Vice President is a holder of a first class master's degree in business administration. He also holds a master's degree in international relations. And not only that, he has a doctorate in ethics. The Honorable Vice President's interests include research, African military and political history, regional and international conflicts, peace and security issues, as well as professional hunting. He also spends his time exploring on economic development, discussing national development and citizens' welfare, reading and also looking at medical research. Him being a repository of industrial development and infrastructural enhancement issues. Our Honorable Vice President also superintends over economic ministries in government in order to ensure implementation of the National Development Strategy 1, its programs and projects which fall under his purview. His presence here at this ZITF International Business Conference clearly, clearly bears testimony 
to the significance he plays to fostering economic development processes by giving it the requisite impetus. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, it is now my honor to humbly invite the Honorable Vice President of the Republic of Zimbabwe and Minister of Health and Child Care, retired General Dr. Constantino Guevara Dominic Nikadzino Chiwenga to deliver his address. Um. The directors of ceremonies, I think there are plenty of them. I don't know who is who now. <laughs> First, maybe we start with um, the permanent secretary of uh, industry and commerce, Dr. Um, Sbanda, maybe Sbanda. Ms. Nomala Nganjovu and Mr. Tawanda Tamire P. I think they have been driving this conference this morning, and I think they have done a good job. <clears throat> Let me start by acknowledging my beloved wife, Ms. Chuenga whom I have come with, Francisca Mieni. And let me recognize our hosts and Zimbabwe International Trade Fair Kanban Board Chairperson, Mr. Busisa Moyo, Minister of State for Provincial Affairs and Devolution, for Blawayo Metropolitan Province, Honorable Judith Nube, Minister of Industry and Commerce, Honorable Dr. Sekai Nzenza, Minister of Finance and Economic Development, Honorable Professor Mturi Nube, Other cabinet ministers here present, deputy ministers here present, but let me recognize the deputy minister of industry and commerce, um, Honorable Raj Modi, chief secretary to the president and cabinet, and the national economic consultative forum. National Co-Chairperson Dr. Mishek Sbanda in absentia. Chairman of the Public Service Commission Dr. Vincent Uungwe. National Economic Consultative Forum Steering Committee Co-Chairperson Dr. Mike Bima. Deputy Chief Secretary is here present Heads of ministries and senior government officials here present, acting secretary for NECF, Mr. Mtize, the chief executive officer of the Zimbabwe International Trade Fair Company, Dr. Ndebere. Captains of let me um, recognize their excellencies, members of the diplomatic corps, and heads of uh, missions who have um, joined us here. And let me, in that special uh, um, Recognition, um, recognize the EU ambas ambassador to Zimbabwe, uh, Josby von Kitchman. Um, I think he has been with us. I've been watching to see if he would uh, leave this uh, conference. I think he enjoy he's enjoying it. Captains of industry, 
and commerce, His Worship the Mayor of Blawayo City, Metropolitan City, Councillor Mugoni, mayors from other cities and municipalities. I have uh, seen my mayor, he is here from Harare. Um, traditional leaders here present, distinguished participants, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, a good afternoon to you all. I hope I find you all well. Maybe before I got into my text, I am happy when I was listening to the various presentations made by the various speakers here. There was one simple message that we as Zimbabweans, we as captains of industry and policy makers, we must now think outside the box. There's no, there's no point of burning candles and reading and internalizing the history written by others. Let's write our own history. I am greatly honored to address the 20, uh, 2023 edition of the International Business Conference, which is being held as part of the 63rd edition of the Zimbabwe International Trade Fair. Allow me to acknowledge and appreciate the board and management of the ZITF company and the National Economic Consultative Forum, NECF, for organizing this high-level engagement, which brings together government, the private sector, foreign delegates, the international business community, small to medium scale enterprises, and non-governmental organizations, among others. Distinguished participants, the 2023 International Business Conference runs under the main ZITF theme, which has been amply explained, transformative, initiate, innovative, even innovation, global competitiveness. I think this is self-explanatory. The conference provides a unique platform for all of us to audit our economic competitiveness within the global context and to chart a new course in our economic trajectory by adopting and applying innovation at every economic level. Government, through the National Development Strategy 1, is put in place policies and programs aimed at achieving private sector economic transformation in an open and competitive, competitive market. Government's major role in the, in the economy is to create a conducive environment for economic development. They prioritize the provision, provision of good quality infrastructure is also meant to raise productivity levels in the economy and bring down cost of doing business. I therefore urge the private sector to take a leading and active role in growing the economy towards the attainment of Vision 2030. The world is changing at an unprecedented pace and both business and countries must adopt 
and innovate in order to stay competitive. We must be at the forefront of innovation and driving change if we are to succeed in achieving our natural aspiration for an empowered and prosperous upper middle income economy by 2030. And this, we give it to you, captains of industry, that you are the drivers, as our policy is very clear, that the economy of Zimbabwe will be private sector driven. So let's see you doing your job, and we do our job. Captains of industry and commerce, with the globalization and the emergence of rivalry economic blocks, partnership and competition have become more intense. Investment in innovation is therefore paramount. As businesses and countries continue to seek ways to con competitively stand out in the international markets. We must therefore focus our efforts on leveraging the latest technologies to meet the ever-changing demands of the global economy. In transforming our economy, I urge you to embrace the tenets of good corporate governance. The President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, His Excellency Comrade Dr. Emerson Damzom Nangagwa, has declared zero tolerance to corruption. Therefore, do not be found on the wrong side of the law. Ladies and gentlemen, since the inauguration of the Second Republic, our country has made significant strides in its economic development agenda. Government's adoption of innovation, innovative and responsive policies, coupled with the resilience of our people, has led to economic successes across various sectors. Wide-ranging economic reforms have restored confidence among entrepreneurs and have induced the prospective and potential entrepreneurs to come forward and set up new businesses. Indeed, while the global economic outlook points to a slowdown in economic activity this year, the Zimbabwean economy is projected to grow by at least 3.8% in 2023 this year. It is pleasing to note that in 2022, about 47% of the Zimbabwean manufacturing firms upgraded their technologies in order to stay competitive. In 2022, again, about 39.8% of our country's manufacturing sector companies invested a total of US dollars 101 million to upgrade technologies and expand capacity. These investments were aided by the availability of United States dollars in loans at banks, increased U.S. dollars earnings by firms, and availability of foreign currency through the auction system. One of the major economic gains of the Second Republic, distinguished guests, is the recovery and growth of the manufacturing sector, sustainably evidenced by a general upward trend in capacity utilization, which stood at 63% in 2022, as per the recent Confederation of Zimbabwe Industries 
survey. This is expected to further improve this year. These investments have already begun to yield positive results as we also recorded significant growth in our export competitiveness. Foreign direct investment has also increased as a result of the investor-friendly policies promulgated by the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, His Excellency Dr. Emerson Dambuzom Nangagwa, resulting in the establishment of new industries and factories, thereby creating employment opportunities for Zimbabweans. Manufacturing jobs now require science, information, communication, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I therefore urge the private sector to take advantage of government's heritage-based education policy and partner institutes of higher and tertiary education to produce high-quality graduates. This is not a task for government alone. Private sector, you are not only in, bus in business as a social responsibility, you are there to make profits. If you want to make profits, then invest in the human resources. Through such partnerships, with tertiary institutions, industry can also work with the various innovation hubs that have been established at our universities for particular areas of research in order to enhance our competitiveness and also influence the curriculum to fit for purpose. Before the 5.0 heritage-based education, we were producing graduates, yes, at our universities, but full of theory and no practical experience at all. But we are, but we are now saying, if we are to grow, this economy. You in the private sector must now say what does your business require? Who should run your business better and invest in that area? That way we will leapfrog and develop the human resource we all want to build this beautiful country. Ladies and gentlemen, government has implemented new policies and programs to support farmers, resulting in increased production of maize and wheat at record levels, surpassing the country's domestic demand. This has been achieved through interventions such as the climate-proof agriculture production, now commonly known as Pumvuza or Intwasa, which is supported by the presidential input scheme. To this end, Government has put in place measures and innovations of promoting import substitution by bringing in participation by private sector in the primary production of strategic agricultural commodities such as maize, wheat, and soybeans. This entails comparing all users of takers of agricultural commodities 
to produce at least 40% of their respective annual requirements. By supporting the local farmer through such frameworks as joint ventures and con contract farming. These interventions have resulted in food security and food self-sufficiency, positive spin-offs in employment creation, increased raw material supply to the industry, and import substitution which has resulted in big savings in foreign currency. Gone are the days where we in the industry should say the farming community or the farming industry must produce. We stay akimbo and I will wait for my soya beans to crash. Chairman, we must put a bit of our profit in contract farming. in improving farming methods which brings high yield is not only production but there must be a level of high productivity level which we must expect that's what we want so together let's march forward together let's stay the course there is no point where we should leave one partner struggling. That's why I said in, before I went on to my speech, let's think outside the box. If we do that, Zimbabwe is the jewel of Africa and will be a jewel of this world. Let's all work together. Not worth economic triumph has also been registered in the mining sector, where increased investor confidence was achieved by creating a favorable operating environment. This has resulted in increased new investment in the areas of exploration, opening up of new mines, expansion of existing operations as well as mineral beneficiation and value addition. In that regard, there has been major investments in exploration of oil and gas, iron ore and steel, lithium, gold and platinum mining. As a result, in 2022, the mining industry generated 5.4 billion in exports revenue compared to, to US dollar 2.7 billion realized in 2017, representing about 100% growth in terms of mineral export revenue. In addition, the approved lithium ore policies and statutory instrument came into place as a way of fostering the country's beneficiation capacity and maximizing earnings from the strategic mineral. I therefore urge both local and international investors to take advantage of the new polis, uh, new police trusts and exploit the opportunities it presents. Zimbabwe's lithium and steel projects are expected to contribute 5.5 billion, surpassing the country's US 12 billion target. It is this integrated cross-sector approach which will move us forward and make us more competitive. Distinguished participants, government has achieved high-impact, life-changing infrastructure projects, which are critical in unlocking overall social and economic growth. These have brought about not only direct social economic benefits, 
but also created an environment in which other industries can strive, can thrive. Improved road networks and telecommunication services have enabled businesses to, uh, to reach new markets in this regard. In terms of energy supply, the country's peak power demand is around 1,700 megawatts, whereas the total supply is about 1,300 megawatts, inclusive of 300 megawatts commission, uh, commissioning power from Unit 7 in Oange. This has seen Zimbabwe electricity transmission distribution combined load shedding on a daily basis to manage the difference. At this juncture, let me highlight that the country's electricity supply is largely dependent on hydroelectric power from the Kariba Dam, which has been affected by a combination of factors, which is including droughts, aging infrastructure at thermal power plants, and slow private sector investment in the new power generation projects. To address the electricity supply situation, the Zimbabwean government has implemented a number of interventions such as rehabilitation of existing power plants, investment in transmission and distribution infrastructure, increasing investment in renewable energy, encouraging energy efficiency and new energy projects. Government continues to make ad adjustments to their electricity tariffs to ensure that they reflect the true cost of production and distribution, which also supports new, new projects in the sector. Zimbabwe has also been working with other countries in the region to improve electricity supply. For instance, the country is part of the Southern African Power Pool, SAP which allows the, for, share, for the sharing of electricity resources among member countries. We are happy that some of the major energy consumers in the country are already importing their own power to augment government efforts. We want to recognize this initiative from the private sector from the big companies in the mining industry who are augmenting government efforts. Well done. <laughs> Captains of industry, bold measures are being implemented by government in fostering price and exchange rate stability in the economy and angering inflation expectations as evidenced by a sustained decline in month-to-month -month inflation from 30.7% in June 2022 to less than 1% from January to March this year. These measures included a combination of tight monetary and fiscal policy. Insistence on value for money for, go uh, for government procurement processes and effective monitoring and surveillance by the Financial Intelligence Unit. The transitory exchange rate volatility, uh, volatility in the parallel market witnessed in the economy from March this year is merely a reflection of the store of value demand for foreign currency. Given that the country continues to experience increased 
foreign exchange inflows reaching 11.6 billion in 2022 up from historical averages of around 5 to 6 billion per year we have doubled that info so there is no point of rushing as though the world has come to an end at gare pass and it reflecting this positive development the country has also been recording current account surpluses since 2019 a critical condition for current stability as such government is staying the course of the current monetary and fiscal policy measures which have proved effective in restoring and sustaining price and exchange rate stability in addition the reserve bank is expect is expanding the investment options for corporates and individuals with excess Zimbabwe dollars balances for value preservation purposes by complementing the current issuance of fiscal gold coins with gold backed digital pro uh, products. This initiative will allow gold coins to, wide, to be widely traded and in the process expanding tradable assets in the economy for store of value purposes and reduce speculative demand for foreign currency. Ladies and gentlemen, health remains key and strategic as it is an enabler for all our key economic activities. Health cannot be postponed. If we are on the trip, we cannot go for May Day or for opening of the uh, International Trade Fair and say, we shall see you when we come back from the trade fair. We will find you dead. Hmm? We constantly hear the adage, health is wealth. But we never have an accurate idea of its value until we lose our health. We cannot even quantify the negative impact of the loss of health on family and business. Our approach as government is to preserve the health sector both as a social service and as a business case. The National Health Strategy 2021 to 2025 highlights key strategic focus areas that are being implemented to turn around the sector. Reduction in mobility and mortality due to communicable and non-communicable diseases have paved way for sustained economic growth. Government is ensuring a healthy workforce across all our development sectors. For years, the government has been relying heavily on imported medical products, but our focus is now in advancing local manufacturing drive. Local manufacturing of medicines has been resuscitated. Furthermore, there has been significant progress in the development of health infrastructure by constructing new health facilities and refurbishing existing ones. The sector is open for progressive investment. Pertaining to tourism investment inflows, statistics for the year 2022 
revealed that the international tourist arrivals in the country rose by 174 percent from 308,820 to 1,043,781 in 2022. This has been amplified by, by the increase in hotel construction and more airlines coming into Zimbabwe. I am also delighted to highlight that the community-based tourism projects are also being accelerated as a vehicle to empower communities. The emphasis is on implementing recovery and growth strategies to the tourism sector. In this regard, the sector is estimated to have generated about US dollars 911 million during the year 2022, a 129% rise from 397 million in 2021. Captains of industry, allow me to turn to, the, to an area which is very close to my heart that of rural industrialization. Government has made huge investments in dams, rural electrification, rural infrastructure, and agriculture, agricultural productivity in the countryside. Agriculture is at the epicenter of, trans of transformation because 70% of Zimbabweans in the rural areas ache their live, livelihoods from this sector. Therefore, it is agriculture that must power people out of poverty into food security and nutrition. The discovery and exploitation of more mineral resources in rural Zimbabwe is creating new rural-based economic activity as never seen before. In addition to, to that, the innovation is appropriate uh, in appropriate technologies for rural application, and what we have is a countryside ripe for transformative growth through industrialization. It is therefore vital that business weigh in with proposals on incentives and tax breaks we need to incorporate in, the, in rural industrialization policy so that this trust becomes attractive. It is, after all, a necessary accomplishment to our well-landed bodies on decentralization and devolution. Itself the panacea to an even and inequitable development. Everywhere where you go into the countryside, there is a big dam which is under construction or which has been completed. Where you go in, in most of the rural areas, new mines have been opened. People in Mad here in Madhubere South never knew that they were sitting on one of the largest lithium deposits. And I think that is the first lithium at Avoka to start doing um, beneficiation once complete. <laughs> we will have our own Silicon Valley, not the SVB which has uh, gone down in the United States, but our own Silicon Valley, when water starts coming into Blawayo from Gwai Shangani. 
So these are the areas which we are talking about. The Turi Manyange Dam currently under construction in Matabere South. We are talking about this region. And the 15,000 hectares we are opening up in Binga at, Bl at Blawai Kro. So these are what we are terming the rural industrialization, which will stop rural to city or to cities migration. We want now the migration from cities back where we were born. Distinguished participants, global competitiveness by its very nature cannot be achieved in isolation. Collaborate, collaboration and partnerships are imperative in driving transformative innova innovation and global competitiveness. The Second Republic, through the engagement and re-engagement policy, is working towards building new, dynamic, and multilateral partnerships between public and private sectors, uh, private actors, within the region and across continents. In order to fulfill this role, government requires champions that drive innovations and seize more radical opportunities. As it is indeed pleasing to note that this year's event has received an overwhelming response from, the, from regional and international exhibitors. The increased interest in the 2023 ZITF is a clear sign that our engagement and re-engagement efforts are paying off. Zimbabwe is a remarkable resource country and its, uh, its diversified economy makes it an attractive destination for investment. Not forgetting to mention the good climate, I urge you to take advantage of the vast opportunities that we have and invest in Zimbabwe to our friends who have come to this event. Our investment agent, the Zimbabwe Investment and Development Agent, ZIDA, is here to assist you. We are also working very hard as a country to improve the ease of doing business environment. As I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you that Zimbabwe will be holding its harmonized general elections this year. I urge all of you to promote the values of love, peace, tolerance, unity, and harmony. Let us all pray. our part to ensure that our elections are held in a peaceful environment. Peace is critical for economic development. And we should not allow anything to delay our economic transformation trajectory. So, we have to be guided by that slogan, the late John Landon Gomo, the, the vice, who was the vice president of this country, Ambri explained, peace begins with me, peace begins with you, and peace begins with all of us. So let's keep that in mind. <laughs> Allow me, therefore, to urge all of us to embrace innovation and advance the national competitiveness agenda proactively. Let us all continue exploring these themes and seeking out new opportunities for innovation and collaboration for posterity.
as government we will continue to champion innovative policies and implement programs with, which create a conducive environment for innovation to thrive and drive the Zimbabwe we want all of us forward. With these remarks, it is my pleasure to declare the ZITF 2023 International Business Conference officially open. I wish you fruitful deliberations. I thank you.